Right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's select board we'll meeting. Um, we're going to get started uh, with our consent agenda item. Is there anything anybody wishes to take off of it? Any problems with it? No, but I think uh, Mrs. Devine is here to speak about Fragile X. Yeah, we'll do it afterwards. Oh. So, okay. is there a motion for the consent? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. So, now uh, public comment session. I think we have some public announcements. So, um, this is the, well, I think it's the fifth year that we've done this uh, wine tasting for the National Fragile X Foundation. Um, this year it's going to be at the Echelon Cafe, and uh, it's going to be October 4th, which is a Sunday. Um, Sean Berry from Four Seasons is a great supporter of our cause every year. He um, arranges the wine distributors to come, so it's great for us. Um, so we have well over 25 different wines to experiment and light appetizers. And um, we'll have a selling auction on site. And uh, this year I got, have wine glasses. If people want to spend a little extra dollars, they can personalize their own wine glass and walk around with their own wine glass. And that's a good thing not to lose your wine glass <laughs> So because they all look alike. Um, so that will be, again, October 4th, and the donation is, a uh, request is $30, and, um... Time? Uh, time. Time. Oh, 5 to 7 p.m. How do you get tickets? Um, I have, um, my email, or my phone number is, uh, 584-1859, or the email is, uh, westernmassma at fragilex.org. All right. And would you want to give, uh, Richard, he could... I want to thank everybody in the past who has been great supporters. It's been wonderful fundraisers. And we thank everybody in the past for their support and look forward to another great year this year. So thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank class. Good luck. Thanks. Any questions, comments, others? Okay. The Friends of the Hadley Council on Aging are having a fundraiser on Thursday. September 24th, it will be a wine and cider tasting featuring Hadley's Car Cider House and Mount Warner Wines. So tickets are available from any member of the board, from the Cider House, from the winery, from North Hadley Sugar Shack, or from the Senior Center. The time is from 6 to 8, and for entertainment, there will be Dixieland Stomp playing. And how much are the tickets? Tickets are $15 in advance or $20 at the door. Any other questions? All right. Thank Sounds you. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I have something too. I don't know if we're going to wait to the announcements. Yeah. Well, now's our public comment time. So if you have a public announcement or you want to. Um, so I was asked by uh, Ginger Goldsbury on the uh, Historical Commission to um, let the town's folks know that they are hoping to find somebody to join their group. Um, who has some sort of architectural experience. Um, what they're finding is that in talking to other historical groups in neighboring towns, they typically have somebody who, with, with a certain skill set on the committee um, who can deal with um, historical architectural issues. And since right now, of course, we're dealing with North Hadley Hall, um, they are realizing that Still. it would be very helpful if they did have somebody available to them that was part of their group to work on that. Um, so they're actually um, kind of just putting out an, an all-points bulletin to say if there's anybody in town who would be interested in serving in that capacity and they do have that uh, set of skills, they would very much appreciate the contact and uh, would like to have a conversation. All right. Mr. Devine. All over town, there's uh, these Hadley community surveys for the master plan updates. I don't know how the surveys are going. I've heard not necessarily that great. Last time, we had a great response, and it really helped with the master plan. It's time to update it. I think the planning board with PVC, PVPA is working on it. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to, David, oh, they're where? Senior Center, they're Town Hall? Senior Center, Town Hall, uh, New Town Hall. And they're accessible online. And, and accessible online. Police station so, they were at. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
That's New Town Hall, right? New Town Hall. All right. Oh. Okay. Well, people would know it more as the communication center, I think. Yeah. In any event, if you could take a few minutes and, and fill it out and get it back, it's real important that you know we get some direction or that direction has been given uh, as to how everybody wants our town to look. It will work great last time, and uh, I hope that everybody takes a chance, uh, takes a few minutes to fill it out this time as well. Thank where, you. Where is it on Hadley.org? Uh, I think it's on the main page, www.hadleyma.org. Okay. What's the time frame on that, Jerry? Is it also on the planning board page? It's in several places on the. Yeah. yeah. How long do they have to do it? And what's August 28th. August 28th. I thought maybe we might want to extend that because of the summer vacations and things, and not everybody being in town right now. It's kind of hard to get everybody to be aware about this. Um, it's been out for a while, right? Yeah. yeah. I know, but you know, people come and go, and summers are busy, and I think once kids sometimes get back in school, sometimes it's a little bit easier. But I don't know if anybody would like to extend that time a little bit. Are we on a deadline? It's, it does have a time uh, timeline on it. Yeah, it does have I, a timeline. I think this process is governed by the planning board. Uh, okay. So if we wanted to extend a deadline, we should request that they do so. Maybe we can chat with the planning board then. Yep. I'm going to talk to them about it. If they didn't get a, that well of a response, give it a little bit more time. That was only a rumor I heard. It's real important too. I mean, the, the more information that we get on this, the better off the plan is going to be. That's my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. And then we should have all gotten invitations as select board members for mm -hmm. to come in and talk with the person who's doing the plan too. So yep. we need to make sure we go in. When is that happening? Um, there's two times. They're in September, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Let me let me get you. At the planning board meeting. Yeah, I think I got it on the email. So I got so an email. So two meetings. The first September is the for the board. second, the third. I think so. I didn't remember the date. It, it, is, it is very important because if, if we think back of how we got to the position we are in as a town in designating our commercial corridor and putting a lot of commercial towards the eastern end of town, I mean, that didn't happen that long ago. That only happened in the 60s, 70s. And, and that corresponded with the big boom that was going on in our neighbor next door. Um, if you've been paying attention to our neighbor next door, uh, there's another big boom going on next door. Uh, they're, they're, they're changing some things and doing some things, and we might, as a community, if we want to tap into that like our predecessors tapped into it in the 60s, we need to be talking about what we're willing to accept and what we're not willing to accept. We have a lot of commercial businesses still coming. We have a lot of dining coming. But then we also have some businesses that are, are not doing that well. There's some vacant vacant places in the mall, there's some vacant places on Route 9, um, and then we are only building one-story buildings in this little, in that little commercial district we have. Is it time to branch out and maybe look at something a little different so we can capitalize on what's going on? So um, it is very important to, to step into this planning, planning process and give your input and and so we can move forward. And maybe maybe we can capitalize something now that'll help our the people who live here 40, 50, actually how long has it been? 50 years now? 55 years. So all right, so is there anybody else who has anything they wish to bring up? Public comment, announcement right now? Okay, so we have a scheduled appointment at 725, so we'll just start our agenda. Yes, Joyce. 715. It was actually posted at 7 point. They got posted paper. wrong. Paper. Oh. Oh, okay. okay, so we'll do old business number one. Holly Road and Laurel Drive. We need to start the formal process tonight. Right, so we've already declared our intention to lay out Laurel Drive as a, uh, as a public way. So we've gone through that process with the planning board. We've not done that with Holly Road, so... Uh, the way it goes is that we declare our our intention to lay out Holly Road as a public way. That a notice of intention goes to the planning board. They have 45 days in which to act. Uh, that takes us to September 26, if I remember correctly. Um, if they take the entire 45 days, we need to have everything wrapped up by October 8th for the special town meeting. 
if we're going to attempt to do Holly Road for uh, the fall time. There is some argument about deferring because we don't have any construction season until the spring anyways. Um, so if you want to do it for the fall, then tonight you should take your vote of intention to lay out Holly Road. Uh, if you think that this is an item for the spring, then you have more time. And with, uh, with um, Laurel Drive, you actually have to set up a meeting to hold your, uh, to lay out the Laurel Drive. In both cases, the, um, in both cases, uh, the, the title for these properties needs to be delivered to the town prior to the town meeting vote. By who? Uh, your lawyer recommends it be by the uh, abutters or the uh, landowners themselves. So Laurel Lane has already started that process, I understand. That's right. Mm -hmm. And Holly Lane needs to start it. They need we... to start it. Okay. So what's the pleasure of the board? Do we what, what does this actually do if we if we decide on this tonight? We're not supporting or negating. We're all we're doing is sending information to be brought so it can be brought forward to town meeting. Right. So you're starting a formal process. Okay. You know, and uh, the first part of that formal process is to declare your intention. The planning board then gives a recommendation back uh, within 45 days. After that time period, then you can take the next step. Do we need to have the um, title issues resolved before voting on our intention? Um, I think you need your title issues resolved before going to town meeting. Okay. So um, if we start the process, even though start, that's unresolved. Right. Right. I think we're still up in the air about who's going to pay for the title search. About oh, getting that. titles, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 What? It, do you have any other actual paperwork from that March 1970? Did you go to the deed's office and, and get any of that? This is on Holly Road? Yeah. 1970 and there was nothing updated in 88 huh in the deeds office in the deeds office what i have is this that's this just a, from 70 and that's this was uh, given to me earlier this year um, i don't think it's up to us to be going through the yeah i don't have a date on this but i uh, this was handed to me in the springtime right it's, it's really for the property owners, people who wish to give it, to come forward. And, you know, if they have an issue and can't get something resolved, then they come ask for help. But I think they need to come forward and at least try to resolve their deed issues first. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I do not see, I don't see a reason to hold off declaring we're going to yeah, accept them. No, so I just, like process. I said, Guilford, there are two unique situations here. Yes. One, because the town has a sewer line running through it right now. And uh, Laurel doesn't at this point. So yes. we've got two separate issues on two separate roads that still need to be resolved here. I agree with that. <clears throat> you want two separate votes? Oh, no. I, we already voted on Laurel, as far as I know. That, that I work was already been done, so yeah. we didn't have to do anything with that. So do we want to vote our intention to accept Mike? I have a set of as-built plans for Laurel Drive from Randy Iser, and I have the sewer map of Holly Road showing the sewer line going down the middle of the road, but I don't have an actual layout like David said of Holly Road. We have the as-built for Laurel Drive. She, Cam, Cam World Peace, has done what we requested of her to do. There is one water shutoff, as we all know, that we can't find. But as far as anything else, I believe uh, Laurel Drive is, you know, up to snuff, as they would say. And voting our intention just allows the process to begin in order for this to get started. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I make a motion on both. A second. So the, just for the clarity of the record, the motion for Holly Road would be your intention mm -hmm. to lay out, and <coughs> for Laurel Drive would be to set up the actual meeting. To, to actually lay out. Yes, sir. Okay. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Mike, you have a 
you wish to talk to us about your order position? Or, excuse Unless me. you have your appointments at 7.15. We have no appointment at 7.15. They're at 7.25. Do we have toasting? Okay, uh, we're going to be talking about the status of the water positions for the Town of Hadley Water Division. Uh, Mr. Devine was involved most recently with this discussion of how we interview candidates for both the water treatment distributions and both have declined our offers and there was a variety of reasons. I will just speak briefly on this. I won't get into it too too much. Both candidates were apprehensive about being in the union. One <coughs> is in the management union already and the other one comes from a non-union workplace. <clears throat> we also couldn't match the pay that this person wanted, this number one candidate wanted to get for the position of the water treatment plant operator. The second candidate decided through a phone call that he wanted to stay in his, third, in his current position. We have another candidate that we interviewed, checked his references, he called, he declined. He wanted to stay where he is. So that brings us back to square one, as I mentioned at the last meeting that I would have one, maybe two. We had them, but they changed their mind. So we've gone back through the applications and we have contacted and interviewed any one of these candidates that have licenses and some experience. Most of them have chosen to withdraw their application due to the nature of the work. The nature of the work involves both inside and outside work, in other words, in the treatment plant and to work out in the field if needed. These people are either treatment operators or distribution personnel. Also, they found that the position doesn't allow for any paid vacation at the beginning, which is all union stuff, which we can't really talk too much about, so I won't get into it. So we are planning to advertise once again. We even reached out as far as Bayside, Bay State Roads program, which really has nothing to do with water, just with roads. But they have a system where you can put it in there, and it's in their newsletter that we are looking for you know, certain personnel. So in the meantime, to cut to the chase, as they would say, we are going to have to, with the board's permission, use small water systems as we have in the past as our primary operator of the treatment plant. Jim Bruchier, the person that's there, the one person that's left, will stay as the primary distribution operator. Also, I'd like to mention that Dennis Pipchinski has offered some of the weekend shifts if we need it. If Jim gets overwhelmed, there's one person that's going to be left to fill in. We contacted the state DEP, Dan LaPrad, about our staffing plan. Because as we know, we're coming to an end on our temporary staffing plan. The conversation, how just briefly touch bases on it. As long as we're using small waters as the primary treatment operator, we list the people that small waters is going to be using they are all right with our staffing plan. As long as we state in our staffing plan that we are actively still searching for operators to run the plant and for the distribution system. So that's basically where we are with that. We are going to have to re-advertise. We interviewed, I interviewed seven, we interviewed three more. It's very difficult to find somebody for that position that would want to do both jobs, let's say, work outside and inside. Either they're trained for one or they're trained for the other. But Hadley being a small town like that, we all have to pitch in, as we know, we all have to do things above and beyond what's required of our job to get the job done. So that's the status of that as we speak. Any it's questions? It's very interesting. I was wondering why I got the notice today about the positions. It showed up on my computer from Facebook. It was like, yep. We're trying every angle we can. Any other questions? You might not, do you uh, have any ideas for Michael as to where else you could advertise that would have success ratio with it? We're having the same problem. So what we do is we just 
we hold on to our, we, well, we have the ability to have a few more people. We bring in a bunch of younger people who have interest and no license and we train them and teach them. And that's, a, that's a detriment to Hadley because there's only three people in the whole department. Whole you can't, department. you don't have room for that. that. That's the problem. It's a small department to begin with. And if you're lucky enough to have a person like myself 30 years ago that wanted to go get my water license and wanted to go get my wastewater license at that time and I was interested enough in it, then, then you, you're lucky. It's like the fire department. When you get the volunteers that come in, some of them stay and some of them get a whiff of it and they leave, you know. That's, that's the way it works when you've got to do so many different jobs in a small town. And we're doing the same for wastewater too. We're yep. bringing in people with no licenses. We teach them how to do it. We license them up. We keep most like, of them. We lose a few. I know, and even the ones that, that don't have licenses. I started here at four dollars and fifty cents an hour. How are you going to start a new guy with no experience at thirty dollars an hour? It just isn't going to happen. We wouldn't do that for a person <laughs> that is a low-level employee because right now we're looking for two. Uh, internal candidate that we have is going to be taking the test for the grade one distribution. So we'll see how that works out. Did today, right? Right. Okay. So awaiting we'll results. Well, how do you do? Don't know. We, I, I don't have the answer in front of me. I don't know. Okay. All right, so we're going to stay with our small waters. We're going to keep going where we're going and keep advertising. Good. The next part of this was the uh, cost analysis, I believe, that Molly was asking about last week. Well, Mike, if we can put that on hold for a second. Yep. It's 725, okay. and we've double booked ourselves here, so we need to okay. move on with the two uh, hearings we have. So what, what happened is we double booked you with uh, two liquor licenses. We're going to open the hearings for both of you. We're going to set one of you aside, clear, finish one hearing, and then come back to the other one, if that's OK. I'm looking for nods. I got no, both two yeah, nods. nods. OK, good. Thank you. All right. So do I have a motion to open the liquor license for Pride Stores LLC and for Johnny's Diner? Is there a second to the motion? So second. 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 So which one do we want to take first? We accept this too. Uh, yeah, let me see it fast. So we want, we want to take uh, Johnny's first or? Sure. Okay, so we'll take Johnny's <coughs> first. Um, I believe we have to accept a, uh, Mr. McConnell. Good evening. I'm Peter McConnell. I'm a lawyer with Bacon Wilson in Amherst, and I'm here tonight representing Johnny's Diner LLC. Um, with me is Matthew Yee, who is the proposed manager on the license. As you know, we're here requesting an all-alcohol liquor license for what used to be known as the Route 9 Diner. Um, the Johnny's Diner LLC is purchasing the property next week. Um, we'll do some renovations and then intends to open a diner style restaurant there serving basically American comfort food. Um, they're requesting an all alcoholic license, as you know, restaurant license, as you know. Uh, Route 9 Diner had one also. I uh, submitted today a letter from the manager of the LLC, the manager of the license, surrendering the license uh, that exists there. But the reason we're looking for a new license instead of a transfer of that one is simply with all of the publicity about the closing, we weren't really sure whether there might be a bankruptcy in the offing and occasionally the license will get tangled up in the bankruptcy court if the bankruptcy court thinks it has some value. So we thought it would be cleaner for us to apply for a new license since uh, there was one available in town. So we have applied for a new license and the current license holder has uh, sent you the letter surrendering that license. Um, Matthew uh, will be the, uh, is the proposed manager. Um, he's 30 years old. He has approximately 16 years of experience in the restaurant business in his family's other restaurants. His family, or portions of his family, own uh, Johnny's Tavern in Amherst, Johnny's Tavern in South Hadley, the Sushi and Noodle restaurant in South Hadley, 
in the Hoopie Lao restaurant in um, Chicopee. Uh, Matthew has worked at all of those restaurants. He's TIP certified, he's safe serve, he's CPR certified, um, and he is currently the general manager of the restaurant in Amherst. But he'll be coming to Hadley to uh, be the manager on this liquor license. It's proposed, as I said, to be American Comfort Food. Um, the approximate hours, what they're thinking now, and they are subject to change. They've done a lot of restaurants, but never a bre breakfast restaurant. Um, and they're looking at probably 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. But that's about what they're, they're looking at. They understand that between 2, uh, 2 a.m. and 8 a.m., there can never be any liquor served anyways. I think Matthew is well versed in the uh, the art of serving alcohol has been doing it for a long time. None of the restaurants he's worked in have had any um, violations. But I think he's an appropriate manager, he's a responsible young fellow, and I believe this is an appropriate spot uh, for the liquor license as has been for the last 10 years or so. So I can answer any questions you have, or Matthew can if you have any. Right. Mr. McDonald, do you anticipate an open date? Uh, within three months. Any quicker than that? Uh, it's, it should be within three months. There's going to be some uh, very significant cosmetic renovations and some upgrading, but uh, it uh, should be open within three months. Okay. Any comments from the staff? Excited to see it come in and open it up again. Yes. Okay. All the paperwork's in order, Bridget? Do they have gas in there? How is that going with the gas line? Is that hooked up to that? Yes. yes. Okay. So that's all existing. So the hope is that they'd be able to turn that back on. <laughs> and that might be something that they might want to inquire about. Maybe they want to get it open sooner than later if that turns out to be an issue. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. just thinking that that's a good. That's a good call. Yeah, it's very good better call. selling gas than uh, gas. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, Chief? Actually, no. Uh, we would just be doing an inspection. As, as usual for opening it, if there was any interior changes, uh, if there's any changes to the bar, um, there may be some changes, but it doesn't sound like it's going in that direction. It sounds like it's just for food service. Chief? I have no issues. I, from what I can recall from my patrol days, any of the issues with uh, intoxicated individuals was most likely occurred before they arrived at the restaurant. So. <laughs> Okay. All right. Is anybody from the point? Any more comments from the board? Any questions from the board? I'm happy to see it open again. All right. Is there anybody from the audience who wishes to make a comment about this? Okay. Do I have a motion to close the hearing for John? So moved. Second. Procedural would be the next motion would be to accept the surrender of the existing license. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor accepting the surrender? Aye. Aye. All right. So all, is there a motion to I'll grant the? A, I'll make a motion to grant the liquor, all, all alcoholic liquor license to Johnny's Diner. Second. All right. Any more discussion? I got one question. The pa past license, was that paid last year? Past yeah. license? It was paid. So yes. it's active still mm -hmm. technically? That's open. why we needed the surrender. Okay. All right. So I have one question. I promised the young lady I'd ask this question. Are you still going to have the dessert carousel like the Ryan Dyer had? Get this enough request for you. Yeah. Okay. Is that the pie? Yeah. <laughs> to tell the truth, that's something that, that there's really not a good, there's not some place you can go late at night to get dessert. It's hard to find a good sure. dessert to hang out. So. Sorry. All right. A big call from that? When my family <laughs> seems to be. <laughs> so, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay, so now we will take up the Pride Store's request for a liquor license. Good evening, my name is uh, James Channing. I'm in-house counsel for Pride Stores LLC. I'm here to answer any questions you may have with respect to the application. Also present with me is uh, Mr. Robert Bolduc, the founder of Pride Stores, which I think 
be in a position to answer any questions with respect to the overall development of the potential parcel. And also a third party with me is Larry Williams, the proposed manager of Pride Stores at this 25 Russell Street location. Uh, Mr. Williams is currently the manager of record at our Northampton store, which does have uh, sell liquor, or should say beer and wine. Uh, with respect to the application of the proposal, uh, we are seeking again to redevelop the Aqua Vita site. It's my understanding that when the Aqua Vita site uh, was in existence, it did have an active uh, on-premises license. At this point, we are seeking to have an off-premises limited to beer and wine.